Bink. Good morning from the Flying Can Ranch at Cedar Creek, Lake Texas. Today I want to talk about a, a little thing I got in. And this is the Crossman 130. This is known as the first variant. And they were made from like 1953 to 1954. The second variant came out in uh, 1955 and ran to 1970. And there's some major differences. So there's this one. I've reviewed this one in the past. This is the Hawthorne, but it would look just like, and if I remember right, um, this was put out from Montgomery Ward Company. So it was kind of a way to <clears throat> multiply market the same gun at that time. So they just called it the Hawthorne, and it was sold by Montgomery Ward. I doubt you could see it, but it kind of says it right there on the side. And this one here had the, the metal pumping piece and the plastic grip. Whereas this one um, was a lot different because you had all wood, all wood. And this piece up here is aluminum. And there was some aluminum here in the front. You'll note that it's got that sort of a loop sight. Whereas this one is more like the regular blade that would come along later. So, a big difference in this gun, we'll look at it this way. So, overall the gun itself is about 11 and a half inches in length. The barrel length is about, I would say, 8 and 3 quarters in length. And um, we can turn it around and look at this side. Uh, it did have the famous cross bolt safety. That same kind of a crinkly finish on the lower receiver but the big difference on this one was i'll try to show you is this little button right here so what happens is you, you've got to before you pump it up see if you don't pump that up what you're going to get is uh see you can hear the air just leaving the barrel so this was a pre-caulking so if you push that till it clicks and that trigger i'm going to try to do that again maybe well maybe I'll see if I can make it happen it forces the trigger forward when you do that get a couple of pumps on it and see if we can make it a, a visual so make sure this is all the way back or at least on mine push it forward now watch that trigger till it clicks and that trigger bounces forward just a hair that's your pre-caulking. And then you can go ahead and pump without holding that in place. It has to have that click. That didn't sound like much. So this isn't a bad, bad looking specimen. There's some wearing on the bluing. Um, and I don't know the exact feet per second on this. Frankie Brock, get out of that. Oh, my dogs are drinking mud water. They're crazy. But um, we'll play with it. It doesn't sound real loud, but remarkably, I was able to punch some holes in a can with it. So, you know, and it, and it seems to work. So I wanted to share that with you. So going on to further things, another problem I had was this port staying locked. You, I might have to tighten that screw up on the top of here. Is The sight on this is a lot like the other one. You have a little screw you can unscrew and slide it side to side for windage, but beyond that, there's no elevation. Um, I have seen examples where people might sort of shim that or put a longer screw in and shim it. That might be possible. Uh, I have shot this yesterday. You gotta aim pretty high and uh, almost over the target. It shoots very low in its, in its state. But it's uh, not bad condition. The wood's in very good. A few little scratches on it. Uh, considering this thing was 53 to 54. So this, this actually rolled up before I did. <laughs> so that's pretty sad. So I'm 65. So do the math. But I wanted to share this with you very quickly. And, and I was lucky enough that in my collection I have what would be considered the second variant. Same thing with a sight. Bigger screw, maybe easier to get a hold of. 
Side sits up, you know, a lot higher. If you put them together, you'll you'll see where. Whoops. Uh, move this one over. The more pronounced sight. Uh, this one, of course, has a lot more bluing, much more cleaner. This is also a very good uh, specimen, in my opinion, given its year. But it uh, it pumps up good, and uh, this you don't have to move the button with, and has a very sharp crack. So this one, the other one might re it might need a kit put in it and you can buy these kits i i haven't really looked into what it would take to install one um but we'll look into it okay. i've rebuilt it myself for all i know find a baker air guns or i think there's another cat that builds kits for them but all in all good condition um i like it i was very surprised with what i got with it yesterday i wanted to share that with you I'm going to go for a quick ride on something here, um, and then when I get back, maybe I'll put together a shooting video, and we'll see how it works. We'll, we'll put one up and test it for accuracy and, and explain, you know, why I have to aim where I have to aim with it. Um, if you have one of these, you, you might have a whole different experience with it. Uh, so, uh, I have a friend that has a, another older air gun just like I do, but I told him, I said, man, I've... I've got to like aim under the target. Like it feels like I got to aim right at a like a quarter, three fourths of an inch under the target to hit the can dead on. Whereas his, he said, "Oh no," he said, "I just aim right at it and go." You know, so who knows? You know, maybe this got bent somewhere down the line. Uh, that could be. I don't want to tinker with it. I'm afraid I might break it. Uh, kind of an interesting concept on the site. But we'll put it together, we'll get you a shooting video, and then I have another cool thing, hopefully it works, it says it does, Come, <laughs> coming in Monday, it's got the box and everything with it. <coughs> um, I did watch a video on this, had a lot, of, a lot of helpful information. The book I premiered last night, uh, reviewed last night I should say, had the same information. So, but we'll put a, a shooting video together a little breezy out I'm gonna take a quick run before it gets hot and we will get back with you later and again I, I appreciate everybody that has subscribed and uh, all the support I've gotten you know over the years I've done this I just decided that I, I kind of wanted to get into um, more classic timeless air guns of course I did a newer one the uh, Humor X uh, MP7 and I'm going to continue to do newer ones if I see something that catches my eye. Uh, I know they got a, I think Gamo came out with an arrow. It's supposed to be a budget PCP. Might get my hands on one of those. We'll just play it out as we go along. So, but I, I was, this is what I was trying to focus on. Add a little bit of difference to the, to the channel. Educate some people on old timeless guns. Because it's amazing how well some of these are built still working still operating again it makes you wonder who had it you know uh, was it a gift birthday gift christmas gift did somebody just buy it to to pest with or just to play with who knows it's all questions it's kind of mystery but now now i have it and sometime in the future i'll be gone and and hopefully someone that appreciates air guns they'll get it and down the line it goes. So I'd like to say, kind of like Jay Leno said about his cars when someone asked him about what it was like to own so many cars, he said, I don't own the cars. He said, I'm just a caretaker of this time. And that's kind of, that was just an awesome statement by Jay Leno. So really, I don't own these guns. I just take care of them until they end up in other hands. And hopefully they'll end up in hands that'll take care of them. So. That's how we do it at the Flying Can Ranch. Yeah, I know I got a little philosophical there, but ooh, my hair. At any rate, got to go get me some Dapper Dan. Yes, there we I don't want no pop. I want Dapper Dan. Two weeks from everywhere. Geographical Odyssey. <laughs> Good movie. Old brother, we're out there. If you haven't seen it, watch it. It is a riot. So we'll catch up with you later. That's how we do it at the Flying Can Ranch and later.